time. How hard was it? I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. Okay, you guys have not been privy to the hours of back and forth that we've been going on this car because we've realized a couple things that are probably gonna require some changes. Here's what I mean. Originally, we were going to build metal wide body panels for this. To make a really long story short, we're no longer going to do that. That is absolutely no disrespect to Sean or the work that he and Nathaniel did while at his house over the summer. Yeah. We just decided that it would be, it's, it's a little beyond our skill. More and it just makes more sense to just go ahead and use these. Yeah, and we it's came across the- lighter. It's more practical, it's more faithful to the original IMSAs. Yeah. Exactly what these used. Yeah. That's what I like. Uh, yeah, we came across the killer deal on these. Now, I don't know if we're gonna use these exact panels but we just happened across another car that had them yeah. and once we started mocking them up we're like wow this looks really really good and yeah. it saves us a enough, ton of time i've got enough fabrication to do on this thing that i just kind of want to yeah it's not for lack of <laughs> all the other fabrications got to be done this saves us a ton of fabrication and a lot of work plus got, it I just got a wing to build and Bunch of other parts and... exactly yeah not to mention the whole body swap every, itself every tiny little thing you don't see yeah so because we decided to go with the fiberglass panels um, all the way across, we realized body doesn't line up exactly how we need it to, because when I originally put the body on the frame, it was sitting forward a little bit, yeah, like an inch or so. And we were like, yeah, it's fine. You know, I'm building panels. I'll just make the panels fit where the wheels are. Exactly. But now, now we kind of care because care. this panel is exactly contoured with the car and all the wheels are sitting about two inches too far back. In fact, the wheel, even the stock wheel, which is not as large as the one that's going in there, is just crammed up against the back here. It's crammed up against the back of the wheel well up here. And when you stand back, you can see, well, look at this one right here. You see the center line of the, um, the rotor and the center line of the wheel well? Quite a bit different. If we were making our own wide body panels, not a big deal. But because this panel kind of matters, yeah, I can only really go on one way because... Yeah. So we're at the point where we make that decision now and not have to um, worry about 55 other domino effects later that this yeah. body being too for far forward causes. It's a really simple fix. Yeah, it's literally, there's only two tabs bolted onto the front. Yeah. There was a couple tabs on the roll bar, but the travel home broke the tack welds. Yeah, <laughs> so... The point is, it's super easy to move the body of this car back a couple inches right now while we still can. Um, the only thing that's gonna require a little bit of work is that the, the way the door mounts, we gotta slide it back as well. It's yeah. got a little bit more weld work in there. I got a couple of top welds and yeah. the bottom. But it kind of works out because the top part of these hinges that we made are adjustable. Yeah. So we can just adjust them as yep. we go on. Yep, you guys thought ahead about that, which is excellent. Yeah, so... Um, Thank you, Sean, for telling me to do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So it's extremely easy to move the whole car back. So we're going to go ahead and move the entire body back a couple inches. We're undoing the tabs 
that are just tacked in here. By the way, this entire car is just tacked together yeah, it just looks for good. this very reason, because we may, we figured we might discover later on that, yeah. oh, this needs to move. This is not the first time this body is going to be either off this car or yeah. off the frame. Yeah, it's, it's going to be on top a lot. Yeah. But for now, we're just going to move it back and try to get it centered on the wheels. And that is our decision. <laughs> it's a difficult one because we feel like I don't know. I just don't want to upset Sean, I guess, is my big thing. You guys did a lot of work on this thing. Well, the big thing was just cutting it and making sure it fit on the body. This is not negating any of that. Yeah, and the cool thing is, is it slightly. yeah, and Sean's done this several times before. He helped you make it in such a way that it's easily unbolted and easily yeah. moved, and that's exactly this what we're doing. The reason this car isn't on the body right now. Yeah. Body yeah. Isn't off frame, I mean. Yep, super easy. So anyway, um... We just figured it would be easier to do now than have to cut the fiberglass, move the center of the line of the wheel wells back. We don't know how to do fiberglass work anyway. It's easier to just move the whole body back and center it on the wheels, and that's what we're going to do. I can't remember actually taking the car, but it was kind of sitting around and got brought back. I think one of them was on the original Yeah. There we go. See for reference how much we moved it back. Yeah, yeah. It makes all the difference in the world, though.
12. So that's at right leg. And you're already going to be rubbing. Yeah, it's, it's definitely got to go higher, but I don't know. It looks like it's squatting a little bit. Oh, we don't, I got to figure out what exact tire size we're getting, and then measure it based off that. Okay. I don't know about Brad, I'm just picking it up a bit. I don't think these fenders where you can tuck them very well. No. So where you can make this thing look like it's, you know, fenders themselves so. don't. What do you guys think about that? That's definitely better than it was. Before, the back of that tire was just completely rubbing and you know, honestly, I couldn't even push the fender in all the way because it was so crammed up against the tire. Now it's centered in the wheel well. And that's a pretty easy thing to do, as you guys just saw. Oh no, 315 to 325, no joke. 315? Yeah. But it's the, the height of the tire. Of course, there's not that many 315, 325 either, tires either. Either 315, whatever number it is. I have the tire sizes written down. Um, any tire that was 305 or wider, I was able to find 18 different tires. Um, so there's, there's a number of them out there, but again, a 305 is probably not going to be wide enough to be honest. So I'll have to eliminate some. Look at that. Um, you guys couldn't see this earlier, but just for reference, you can see how far back we just went with the cowl versus where the fender used to be. And all we got to do is just weld on a couple more tabs here again to the side of the body here that are just tacked on there. Get our ride height correct back here. I'm gonna start welding on braces back here to hold this up. Uh, we're gonna redo a new roll bar and then uh, have tabs on it as well uh, to the body. We'll be going out from here to here to the B pillar, possibly one or two at the top, kind of the way a race car does. Um, you've seen roll bars that sometimes have connections from the A pillar to the roll bar up here. I don't know if we're gonna do that because this Corvette dash is quite massive, but at least back here with the four point or the six point, whatever we decide to do. Back out here in the garage again tonight, Nathaniel's setting up the center point. Point. Oh, yeah. Point, yeah. Got a cool little laser doodaddy here. And as you can see, our reference points of the frame, I don't really trust the engine because sometimes the engines are offset, but we do know the frame has a center point. So we have a center point of the frame here. And we're using, we got this thing kind of tilted forward a little bit. He's still trying to adjust it at the moment, but if he leans it forward, he can hit that point and that point at the same time and know that the okay. car itself is centered. Something in the back too. Actually, yeah, actually it might go all the way through, won't it? Yeah. Yeah, if it's strong out. enough, yeah, we'll find out. Maybe we'll turn out the lights or dim them or something. Yeah, that's what we had to do for the last one. Was it? Yeah. Okay, when you and Tom were doing this? Yeah. Cool. So that's what we're doing right now. We're going to make sure this thing is perfectly centered. And then after it's centered, we'll make sure it's level, left or right. And then we'll start finding attachment points for this thing and get it nailed down. Got the car leveled, currently welding on a tab on the front. Got the passenger side done. It's working on the driver's side right now. Got the cow raised up to the level of the fender where the car is level. And then left to right. Top now is level as well. So we feel pretty confident about that tab. Oops.
basically the exact same design as the Corvette doors. Had. Really? Yeah. Huh. So it's just a it's just a plate with the bolts on it that kind right. of slid around in its own little. Yeah, it had an adjustable plate on the back, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Similar to, similar to this. So you designed something similar to the original Corvette. Yeah. That's where we got the, that's where we got the idea, idea at least. Yeah, very smart. Mm -hmm. People don't seem to realize that it's not only what you fabricated and got done over the summer, but the amount of time it took to actually take a look at all the different parts and pieces and figure it out. Like, even come up with those ideas takes a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's amazing what you guys got done. You know what I just saw? It. What? You know how even Monza owners complain about how far back these mirrors were? Some people even move them forward because they look more normal up there. Mm -hmm. It actually helps you out being this far back now with this Corvette dash being so far back. You wouldn't be able to see them if they were up in the normal spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think about that. Yeah. All right, ready to pull off? All right, we just had to do some cutting and hacking. Um, not exactly the wall out hole we wanted, but this was the original hole. What we really need to move is further back, and cutting this thing out is really just kind of out of the question, so that's all we could do. It gives us plenty of adjustability for the door. And now, Nathaniel's gonna weld on these nuts really well. Yeah. So they don't pop off, because I think they were just tacked on before. So that that back of plate go in there. Okay, end of the night. We've uh, figured out a lot tonight, but it means we got to redo some stuff. That is the darndest thing when you're trying to attach a body to a chassis that was never meant for it. But it's just one of those things, if you don't do it right now, there's gonna be 50 domino effects later that you're gonna be cursing at. So we gotta correct it now. So um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. See the door gap here on the A-frame? I'm sorry, on the A-pillar. Door gap here on this A-pillar. Honestly, I wouldn't have even cared if they were both the same. We could have just created some filler piece or whatever, but it's not the same. And it's only simply because this bar that we welded in here just needs to have the tacks cut, squeezed in a little bit. It's actually pretty easy to do. It just kind of sucks that we gotta cut the tack welds and redo that. The other thing is this hinge was cut back so that it brought the bottom of the door in a little bit. This hinge was not. So the bottom of that door actually sticks out about five eighths of an inch further out than that side does. My problem is I'm a lot of scrap Monzas. I don't have any more hinges. <laughs> so I don't care if the door sticks out and I don't care if the door pulls in a little bit. I just want them to be the same. I mean, and the reason we want them to be the same is because it's gonna affect how the wide bodies the wide body panels look on both sides. You kind of want them to be symmetric. So the easiest thing to do is we're gonna have to cut those tack. We're gonna have to cut those welds anyway because the door had to be moved back. But when we do, we'll get a bandsaw and we'll cut this down to the same depth as the hinge on the other side. So just little things. It's kind of annoying when you find them. Yep. But in the grand scheme of things, they actually are a pretty easy fix. It just sucks we gotta cut them. So, but better to get it right now than later. 
by the way, this door is moved back now. I didn't really film that part, but we did get it. Um, we got the hinge relocated back there. This is not welded on yet. It's just kind of hanging there, but got a good gap there. It's where it should be all the way around. It just needs to be pushed in on this side here. So we'll get it. And that's the end of tonight. We'll see you guys the next time we're out here. Back out here in the garage again tonight. I've actually been inside working for a little bit. Nathaniel's been out here for quite some time. Yep. You want to tell him what you've been doing? Not a lot of progress because it doesn't move much. <laughs> well, it's a lot of work but, to get what you got, though. Um, just been trying to fix this door gap a little bit. So I kind of went ahead and cut the post we made at the bottom and moved it in. So this whole big, this post here that the yeah. whole door is mounted to, you cut the welds at the top <coughs> and the bottom. It's moved in about an eighth inch, basically. Okay. To help get the door in further. Uh, right now, I've just got it. I re-tacked with the bottom, kind of pull it over at the top. And uh, the gap's a little better. It's still bigger than factory, but I mean, it's not It's really. not horrible. We're trying to fix this gap. The problem we're I mean, running I into... We cut out about a quarter inch to what it was. It used to be way worse. I think it was a lot worse. I think it cut out almost a half inch. It was horrible yesterday. Yeah. I think it's actually much, much better so. than it was. So, and this door is actually leaning in too close. So, don't look at this and compare it to this. This is actually pretty close to factory, if uh, if I'm honest. Plus, by the time you put the trim on there, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so good job on that, bud. Yep. He was hefting that door up and down several times all by himself. It's not easy. No. Not, not <laughs> No, it took the glass out of it, but it's still a heavy door. Yeah. So, so, that's uh, what we're going to continue. I, yeah, think. I just got to tack it up front now so it doesn't move back, and I move this off of it. Okay. And then... See what needs uh, adjusted next. Yep. All right, good job, bud. All right, well, the more we keep messing with this, the more we need to adjust. And at the moment, it's this bottom hinge off the door. And it sits down here. We've not cleaned all this up yet. We're just literally hacking away until we know it works. But this is the bottom of the original Corvette frame. Mm -hmm. And it tacks on somewhere right here, but it's still sticking out too much. So we need to shorten this hinge. I'm going to have to cut it shorter as close to that door stop as possible um, maybe like another three-eighths of an inch it's kind of a mess because we've been tacking on it right now but we're going to take the bandsaw shorten it up tack it back on here right now the problem we're having is while the door is now lined up um, it's not sitting up straight up and down it's like this because the bottom's sticking out too far so we're going to bottom shorten the bottom hinge to bring it back in Let's see how close we can get it. If this thing doesn't work, we may end up just making our own hinge that's as short as we can make it with a couple tabs, and maybe it won't even have a doorstop on it, because why not? There's already a doorstop on the top hinge anyway, so. Well, folks, we've been messing with this door more times than I care to admit. We've had this door off of here 25 times a night, adjusting, welding, cutting, re-welding, adjusting. But now, the door actually... Ignore the pop. Yeah, that's an old hinge. But it stays at the level that it should. We got the preload built in. And it's secure. It's not flexing. We don't have to pick the door up to shut it. And you're checking the striker right now, the striker position. Just seeing where it'll end up. Okay. Build a box out. Yeah, because we got to build up the 
door frame because there actually obviously is not one. So yeah, put the door in the closed position with the striker already in it. You kind of know where to build it. Two by three. For the, oh, just to do a box for the, where the striker is? Okay. Bo uh, box two by three, you mean? Yeah. Okay. It's like a bigger. Yeah, that's pretty solid too. That's kind of what you want for the door. Yeah. And it'll just be kind of an angle here. And it'll extend out as far as it needs to be a little flat space right here with a hole for the striker to go through and not weld on the back. Not well, but not well, but they'll have a yeah. nut and a washer, essentially. Yeah. Similar to like a plate. Something that allows it to still be adjustable, right? Yeah. 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 It'll be a plate similar to that. Right. But yeah. That's a good idea. That's an idea. Yep. All right. Well, that'll be like the next thing we tackle. Yep. Once we figure it out, figure out all of those issues on this side, then we can go to the other side over there and yep. repeat. This is what I love. The door's just solid now. It doesn't flex. I like it. We were able to retain the original style door hinges. We just had to trim them quite a bit and shorten them up. But that gives us a spring. It gives us a door stop. It gives us a midpoint. It gives us all the way out here. Just like the factory. Yep. I think that's pretty awesome. Good job. Yeah. Well, I think that's going to be it for tonight, guys. We'll come back another night. <laughs>